Well, hallelujah and good morning, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King and Lord and shall reign forevermore. Together, the people of God say hallelujah. Well, friends, today is June 18th of the year 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, before we begin our study this morning, I know that for many people, it's difficult to read the Bible, and yet it is our desire here in this ministry to encourage you and to show you as many ways that you can approach reading the Bible as possible. Now, we've discussed in the past reading eight chapters a day, which would allow you to read the New Testament once every month. If you read four chapters a day, you would read the New Testament once every two months. And so that would be six times a year, and you can imagine what that would do for you. But another way that you can read the Bible is you can read five chapters a day. In other words, say, for instance, the book of Galatians. If you were to read the book of Galatians every single day for a period of 30 days, you would become so acquainted with that book that you would no longer have to refer to outside resources to find what it is that you're looking for in the Bible. It will be locked into your memory banks and you will turn straight to it. And over time, as you do this with several different books, you will become much more familiar with the Bible. And not only to find what it is that you may be looking for within the New Testament, but the more of the New Testament that you read, the more the Holy Spirit can use those passages to speak to you in times of need. Now, I say this because for, for some time I have been reading the New Testament once a month. And yet, oftentimes, it's very difficult for me to remember, maybe it's old age, but it's difficult for me to remember where I read what I read. And so I'm going to begin the practice of reading five chapters a day, a single book, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, Timothy, Titus. There are many small books that we can read in the New Testament, and we could do so every single day for a period of 30 days. And I'm trusting and hoping that this will help me retain what it is that I am reading much better than I'm able to do so now. With that being said, we're going to continue our study on the book of First Enoch, and we are in chapter 54 today. Now, chapter 58 begins the third parable of the three, which is what we're studying at this time. And so today we're going to review chapters 54 to 57. Now, I have placed the link in the description box so you can follow along with us in the book of First Enoch. And if you have that open in front of you, as well as your Bible, let's begin with First Enoch chapter 54. Enoch says, I looked and turned to another part of the earth, and I saw there a deep valley with burning fire. And they brought the kings and the mighty and began to cast them into this deep valley. And there mine eyes saw how they made these their instruments, iron chains of immeasurable weight. Now, if you've been with us in this study for very long, you know that we discussed the size of the giants. And if the giants were as large as many speculate they were, can you imagine the signs of these chains of immeasurable weight? And he says in verse 4, I asked the angel of peace who went with me, saying, For whom are these chains being prepared? And he said unto me, These are being prepared for the host of Azazel, so that they may take them and cast them into the abyss of complete condemnation, and they shall cover their jaws with rough stones as the Lord of Spirits commanded. Now, if you'll remember back in chapter 8 of First Enoch, we're told that Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of a metal used in alloys and the beautifying of the eyelids, which is where we see the origins of prostitution stemming from and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. Now, this is what this fallen angel taught men. There were also those in chapter 2 of verse 8 that taught enchantments, root cuttings, astrology, constellation reading, cloud reading, earth reading, sun and moon reading. And God never intended for men to know these secrets of the heavens. And yet this is exactly what these fallen angels taught. And so Azazel is the one who taught the precious metals and how to form them into battle gear. And obviously it was never God's intention for men to war or battle against one another. 
And so back to chapter 54, it says in verse 6, Michael and Gabriel and Raphael, which were three of the four mighty angels we discussed back at the first of our readings in the book of 1st Enoch. And then it says also Phanuel. Now, if you'll remember, Phanuel was one of the four presences along with Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel mentioned in chapter 40. And it says that these four angels shall take hold of them on the great day. So these four mighty angels will take hold of these fallen angels who taught men these evil ways, and they will cast them on that day into the burning furnace that the Lord of spirits may take vengeance on them for their unrighteousness in becoming subject to Satan and leading astray those who dwell on the earth. Now we also see a glimpse of this in Revelation chapter 19 verse 20 when it says, The beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. The same way these fallen angels under the authority of Satan taught men these evil practices, so do the false prophet and the antichrist or the beast during the time of the tribulation. And it says these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Now in chapter 20 over at verse 10, it says, The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And that's what we're being told here, that the Lord of spirits will take vengeance on them for becoming their unrighteousness and becoming subject to Satan and leading astray those who dwell on the earth. And so it appears that verse 6 is talking about the end of days. But in verse 7, it seems like it's going to talk about the end of man in the first 2,000 years of man's living upon the earth. Because it looks like it's going to discuss the flood. It says in verse 7, In those days shall punishment come from the Lord of spirits. And he will open all the chambers of waters which are above the heavens and the fountains which are beneath the earth. Now in Genesis chapter 7 verse 11 We are told in the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, those waters contained within the earth, and the windows of heaven were open. So the earth was flooded by waters from the heavens and from the earth. And Enoch says, all the waters shall be joined with the waters. That which is above the heavens is masculine, and the water which is beneath the earth is the feminine and they shall destroy all who dwell on the earth and those who dwell under the ends of heaven and when they have recognized their unrighteousness which they have wrought on the earth then by these shall they perish by these waters they shall perish chapter 55 after that the head of days repented and said in vain have i destroyed all who dwell on the earth And he swore by his great name, henceforth I will not do so to all who dwell on the earth, and I will set a sign in the heaven, and this shall be a pledge of good faith between me and them forever, so long as heaven is above the earth. And this is in accordance with my command. And in Genesis chapter 9 verse 11 it says, I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And so Enoch is telling us here in chapter 55, verse 2, even before Noah is aware of it, that God is going to destroy the earth with a flood, repent from doing so, and make a covenant with man, the earth, and all flesh upon the earth, that he will never do so again by water. Then he says in verse 3, when I have desired to take hold of them by the hand of the angels on the day of tribulation and pain because of this, 
I will cause my chastisement and my wrath to abide upon them, saith God, the Lord of spirits. Now it appears at this point we are going to revert back to the end of times, specifically the time mentioned to us in the book of Revelation. He says, you mighty kings who dwell on the earth, you shall have to behold mine elect one. How he sits on the throne of glory and judges Azazel and all his associates and all his hosts in the name of the Lord of spirits. Now, as we begin chapter 56 and 57, if you're familiar with the book of Isaiah, the book of Zechariah, the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, many of the themes that are discussed in those books, you're going to hear in these two chapters. So let's begin with verse one. I saw there the host of the angels of punishment going, and they held scourges and chains of iron and bronze. And so these would be those chains of indescribable weight. And he says, I asked the angel of peace who went with me saying, to whom are these who hold the scourges going? And he said unto me, to their elect and beloved ones, that they may be cast into the chasm of the abyss of the valley. And then that valley shall be filled with their elect and beloved. And the days of their lives shall be at an end. And the days of their leading astray shall not thenceforward be reckoned. And in those days, the angels shall return and hurl themselves to the east upon the Parthians and Medes. They shall stir up the kings so that a spirit of unrest shall come upon them. And they shall rouse them from their thrones, that they may break forth as lions from their lairs and as hungry wolves among their flocks. And they shall go up and tread underfoot the land of his elect ones. Now, this would be Jerusalem. This would be the land of Israel. And most likely, this is speaking of the battle of Armageddon. And it says, the land of his elect ones shall be before them a threshing floor and a highway. But the city of my righteous shall be a hindrance to their horses. And they shall begin to fight among themselves. And their right hand shall be strong against themselves. And a man shall not know his brother, nor a son, his father, or his mother till there be no number of the corpses through their slaughter, and their punishment be not in vain. Now when we read here, till there be no number of the corpses through their slaughter, what it is inferring is that there is going to be such a great loss of life. And when we look at Revelation chapter 14, verse 20, it says the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress even unto the horse's bridles. And so the casualties of this war are going to be so great in number, they're without number, and the blood will run so deep, it will rise to the horse's bridles. Friends, the earth has never seen such warfare as that. Back to verse 8 of chapter 56. In those days, Sheol shall open its jaws, and they shall be swallowed up therein, and their destruction shall be in an end. Sheol shall devour the sinners in the presence of the elect. Chapter 57. It came to pass after this that I saw another host of wagons and men riding thereon and coming on the winds from the east and from the west to the south. And the noise of their wagons was heard. And when this turmoil took place, the holy ones from heaven remarked it. And the pillars of the earth were moved from their place and the sound thereof was heard from the one end of heaven to the other in one day. Revelation chapter 16 verse 18 it says that the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. There were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. It says in verse 20, every island fled away and the mountains were not found. And so this being how John describes it, Enoch says the pillars of the earth were moved from their place. John says the island fled away and the mountains were not found. And so it appears that they are both seeing the same vision at two different times in history, and yet their description of it is exactly the same. Enoch ends chapter 57 in verse 3 by saying, They shall all fall down and worship the Lord of spirits. And this is the end of the second parable. They shall all fall down and worship the Lord of spirits. That should remind you of what Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 2, verse 10, when he says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow 
of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. That will indicates future tense. But friends, we have the privilege to bow our knees in surrender today, in the present, to confess Jesus as our Lord, as our King, and as our God, today, in the present. And not only confess Him with our tongues, but to confess Him in the way that we live our lives. When we let someone else go in front of us at the supermarket, when we let someone else cut in before us in traffic, when we cut off our TV and go next door to help our neighbor, when we pull out our wallet and buy food for someone who is in desperate need of such, when we go through our closets and take what is excess, unnecessary, and give it to someone who needs it even more, when we wake up early in the morning and we pray for those who are hungry, who are suffering, who are imprisoned, who are watching their loved ones die, and maybe even themselves facing death for the name of Jesus. When we open our Bibles and read and study the Word of God so that we can become even more aware of what He asks of us and be faithful in living it out in our lives. I trust you are doing just that, friend. I would ask that you would pray for me that I will do so as well. So that when we do stand before the Lord on that great day that we are learning of as we study the book of First Enoch, that we can stand before him unashamed, confident, knowing that we are going to hear those words, good and faithful servant. Now, I truly love you today, friends. I pray that your heart has been touched, that your soul has been blessed, and that you'll walk with Jesus throughout this day knowing that you have been purchased by his blood and that you are highly favored in his sight. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I'll see you on the next video.